Hi there! In this video, I'm going to try and revise with you everything you need to know for integration in the Corfu Mate level in 40 minutes. Now, it's quite a long video, but the, the, the integration in Corfu is, you know, about a third of the syllabus is involved in so many questions. I'm going to try and go through every single uh, strategy for integrating every technique. Along the way, I'll do some examples. I'll just point you in the right direction for others and I'll try and hit, show you how you could come up with thinking to do that strategy. It's important you watch this video in detail, take notes, make revision cards, or even better, make one massive, maybe A3 poster that revises everything on this particular video. One thing you might also want to do is you might want to work through any of the questions I don't finish off on the video and check you can do them. Okay, here we go. Okay, firstly, what is integration and how do we use it? There are two things really that we use integration for, or th maybe three things we use integration for in our A-level syllabus. Firstly, it is the uh, inverse of differentiation. Sometimes an integral is called an antiderivative. An anti differentiation. Okay, so for example, if we had y is equal to, I don't know, x squared, um, and then if we differentiated it, we had dy by dx was equal to 2x. Now, if we integrated dy by dx now with respect to x, if we integrated the 2x with respect to uh, x, we would get x squared plus c. So this is the process of differentiation. And integration is the opposite process. Integration uh, takes you uh, from the derivative uh, to the function you had before you differentiated it. Secondly, what do we use it for? Well, we tend to use it a lot for the area under a curve. Suppose we had a curve here, and this is y equal f of x. Integration really is all about a technique to find the area under this curve. Suppose we wanted to find the area from x is a to x is b, this area here, we would say that the area is the integral between x is a and x is b of the function y with respect to x. We would integrate that function, substitute in the limits a and b, and we would get uh, an answer for the area of that function. Now obviously, if the curve was given, if x was given in terms of t, another parameter and y was given in terms of t another parameter so they're given parametrically the area in this case would be the integral uh, that would be t1 and t2 between t1 and t2 y dx dt dt so that's just the parametric version of the same thing and lastly we use it to work out volumes of revolution if we swept this area around 360 degrees Around the, uh, around the x-axis, we would work out its volume as the integral between a and b, and we use y squared dx, and we have a pi here. So we use it, we square the function, uh, we integrate it between a and b, and then we multiply by pi. Parametrically, um, the volume is very similar, but it would be the integral between t1 and t2, y of t, the func y given as a function of t squared, dx by dt, dt. Okay, so there's, that is what integration is and how we use it. It's the antiderivative. If we integrate a dy by dx, we get the original function back. We use it to work out the area under the curve when we do definite integrals, and we also can use it to work out the volume of revolution of a curve when we use the formula uh, v equals pi integral y squared dx. Okay, let's look at the techniques we require for core four. There are nine techniques you need to know. Standard results. By standard results, I mean simple polynomials. The kind of integrals you were doing in core uh, call two. Okay, so polynomials. The formula book. You need to be familiar with the formula book and what integrals are in there. Okay, you must be very familiar. So make sure you've got a copy of the formula book and you're accessing it regularly when you're doing questions to check what you need to know and what you don't need to know. 
Trigonometric identities, often these core three identities will help us and they're usually the double angle or half angle formulae. Exponential functions, functions of the form y equals e to the 2x plus 1, we need to integrate those. Uh, logarithm functions, by that I actually mean uh, functions that give you a logarithmic answer, so it would be when we integrate y over x plus 1, something like that, or where we integrate uh, y equals, I don't know, sine x over cos x plus 1, that type of thing, which I'll come to later. Partial fractions, this is where step 1, you need to um, put the um, quotient, it's with quotients, i.e. Um, algebraic fractions, where you have to put the algebraic fractions into partial fractions first and then get a logarithmic answer like part 5. Integration by inspection, integration by parts, and integration by substitution. So you need to be familiar with these nine techniques and when and how to use them. So I'm going to go through each in detail. Right, firstly, standard results. By standard results, I mean um, integrating polynomials. Okay, where n, the, the power in the polynomial, is not equal to negative 1. For example, if I ask you to integrate, uh, I don't know, x cubed, or 1 over 2x plus 1, 2x squared plus 1 even, Okay, things like that, but not things like 1 over 2x plus 1. Okay, because the x power there is, is uh, x to the negative 1. It's something of that nature. So um, I don't want you to use this technique. This is just where you have polynomials or you have x to the power of something where n is not negative 1. Okay, this one. All you do with these, you... The rule here, as it were, the quick rule, is you add 1 to power and then you divide by new power. Okay, that's the principle behind this. So if we integrate this, add 1 to the power, it would be x to the 4 and divide, so it would be a quarter x to the 4, don't forget plus c. Here, this here, I would actually take the two-thirds out and realise it was the integral of root x, which is x to the half. Then add 1 to the power, so it's 3 over 2, and then do two-thirds divided by 3 over 2, and you would get 4 ninths. So this is 4 ninths x to the 3 over 2 plus c. Here... Well, I would write this as, I would take the 2 out, and I would write this as the integral of x subtract 1 to the negative 3 dx. Now, add 1 to the power, so it would be negative 2, divide by negative 2, and you'd get, and also divide by the uh, differential of the bracket, which is 1. So the answer would be negative x subtract 1 to the minus 2 plus c, which we might write as that, which would be easier. Lastly, this one, what I would do is I'd take out the four fifths first of all and write it as one subtract two x to the negative three with respect to x. Now keep the four fifths there and let's do the integral. Add one to the power, so it's minus two, so it'd be one subtract two x to the minus two. Divide by minus two and also divide by the differential of the brackets, which is another minus 2. And then tidy it up, you'd have 4 fifths uh, multiplied by a quarter, 1 minus 2x to the negative 2 plus c. The 4s would cancel, and I'd get, if I write this simply, I'd get a fifth, or 1 over 5, 1 minus 2x squared plus c. Okay, so there are all the standard results, x to a power, type functions where the power is not negative 1. Next, we're going to take a look at what's in our formula booklet. In the core 3 section, we have the following differentials. This is going from here and differentiating. Okay, so clearly we can use these to think of 
going back and integrating. And also it gives us some standard integrals that we need to know. Now from this, let's just do from this one here. Um, actually, I'll start off with this one here. It tells us that if we're integrating sex squared kx, so if we're integrating sex uh, squared, let's say, uh, 2x, we can use the standard result is 1 over 2 tan of 2x plus c. Okay, and similarly, we should really have uh, numbers in here. Say if we were integrating this one here, the integral, let's say, of 3 cot, um, I don't know, 2x dx. Okay, we know the answer is going to be ln sine 2x, so it's going to be some form of ln, uh, that should be a modulus there, ln sine 2x plus c. However, there was a 3 here, and we've also got to divide by the differential of, of inside the brackets, which would be 2. So we've got our 3, but we're going to divide it by 2. So it would be as follows. And similarly, if we were integrating, let's say, I don't know, um, 5 sec 3x, we're going to apply this idea. We know it's ln sec. We know it's going to be of the form ln sec 3x plus tan 3x. Okay, but also we've got to make sure we divide by the differential of the bracket, which would be 3, so it's going to be 5 thirds, and then plus c. Okay, and uh, we can so we can apply these standard results. Something that's worth thinking about from the core 3 section uh, if we know that cosec differentiates to negative cot x, uh, negative cosec x cot x, if I ask you the integral of, let's say, cosec 2x cot 2x, you should be able to realise that integrating uh, this uh, gives you negative cosec. So we know it's negative cosec. It's, we're dealing with the function two, uh, of 2x, um, but also we're going to have to divide by uh, that uh, to there, so it would be uh, negative a half cosec 2x plus c. Okay, and we could apply similar results to this one here. Let's say I wanted to integrate, uh, I don't know, a third sec 2x tan 2x. We should realise that the integral of sec x tan x is sec x, so I know it's going to be the integral of, it's going to be of the form sec of 2x, okay, plus c, but I've got a third there and I'm going to divide by the two here so it would be a sixth sec 2x plus c. So that's the, the work from the formula book. Okay, next we're going to move to the trigonometric identities. There are a few you need to know here. You clearly need to know your the following. You need to know that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. Dividing everything through by cos squared, you get 1 plus tan squared x equals uh, sec squared x. And dividing everything through by sine squared, you get cot squared x plus 1 equals cosec squared x. You need to know these and be familiar with these. You also need to know your double angles, which come from these. And the double angles uh, tell you the following, that cos 2x... These are the ones you need, are 2 cos squared single x take away 1. So cos of 8x would be 2 cos squared of 4x take away 1. You also need to know that cos 2x is equal to uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared single x. Okay? And you also need to know that sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. These, you need to know them like the back of your hand. Okay, the other thing you might need to know is in the formula booklet. And this is the other thing you need to know here. It is the half angle formulae. But you don't need to know these off by heart. You just need to know that if you get an integral that looks a bit like this, you're going to use the half angle formulae. Okay, so let's give these questions a go. We won't necessarily do them, but I'll tell you the technique. You can only integrate single signs, single causes, single uh, stuff like that. If you've got a sign to the power, 
a sine squared in particular, you're going to use this identity here. You're going to make sine squared the subject, and you're going to say that this is the same as the integral of a half, 1 subtract cos 2x. That's rearranging this, making sine the subject, which is the integral of a half, subtract a half, cos 2x dx. Now, you, need, you can integrate a half. It's clearly a half x. You can integrate this, which the integral of cos is actually sine. So, um, uh, sine, so it would be negative a quarter sine 2x plus c. Similarly here, I would take the 5 out of action here, and I'm integrating cos squared 3x dx. Now I'm going to rearrange this formula this time to make cos squared the subject, but cos squared 3x the subject. This would be 5, the integral, okay, of a half cos of double the angle here, so it would be 6x uh, plus 1. And that's take the 5 out, that's the integral of a half cos 6x plus a half dx. And you can integrate this, um, the integral of cos is sine, so this would be 5, and it would be a twelfth sine 6x plus a half x, okay, plus c, and you can multiply by the 5. Now the integral of tan squared, there is no double angle formula for tan squared, but you know that 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. So this is the same, take the 3 out, the integral of tan squared, rearranging this, is the integral of sec squared x, take away 1. Okay, now going back to your um, formula booklet, it, you know that the integral of sec squared is uh, tan, is just tan. So you can say this is 3, and when you integrate it, that's simply tan x minus x, and then plus c. Okay? Now this one here, the integral, when the sine, uh, sine and a cos are multiplying and the angle's the same, you've got to think the sine double angle formula, this one here. Now I know sine 2x is 2 sine single x cos x, so I know um, that if I wrote that with a 2 in front of it, and then divide it outside by the 2, so I so I hadn't really changed it. 2 sine 2x cos 2x is actually sine of 4x. So this is a half, the integral of sine of 4x dx. And the integral of sine is negative cos, and divide by the 4 would be negative an eighth cos 4x plus c. Lastly, I've got a sine and a cos multiplying together, but the actual angles are different. You've got a 3x there and a 2x. When you spot something like this, go to the half angle um, formulas in the formula booklet. And which one of these does it look like? Look on this side. Is it a sine and a cos uh, together? So um, that's a sine and a sine, that's a cos and a cos, that's a cos and a sine, and that's a sine and a cos. Let's say for argument's sake we use this one, although I would have thought you could use that one just as well. Um, a plus B over 2, we know that A plus B over 2, we're going to try and make that equal to 3x, and we're going to make A subtract B over 2 equal to 2x. Okay, doubling this one up, that's A plus B is going to be equal to 6x, and A subtract B is going to equal to 4x. Adding the equations together, let's say, 2a is 10x, so a must be 5x, and clearly then b must just be single x. So we can apply this formula, we can apply this rule here, and we can say, I'm going to rub that out now, we can say that the uh, if I had put a 2 in there, okay, so it looks like that, but then divided by the 2, so I haven't made a difference, this is the same thing as the integral of a half sine of, and I said x was um, 5x, uh, so I said a was 5x plus the integral of single x dx, and then I could keep the half out there. The integral of sine is negative cos, and it, so it's negative a fifth cos of 5x uh, sub, subtract cos of 
single x plus c. We're done with our trigonometric identities, but you can see from this how you have to know these very, very easily. And also, one thing maybe I forgot to mention that I should have uh, mentioned before and wasn't in my standard results. You need to know the following. You really need to know that the integral of cos x dx is sine x plus c. The integral of sine x dx is equal to negative cos x plus c. And obviously with constants you divide by the constant. But you must need to know that and these trigonometric identities to have a chance of knowing what's going on with these integrations. Next we're integrating exponential functions. These are dead easy, thankfully. The integral of uh, something like e to the ax plus b with respect to x is simply um, 1 over a e to the ax plus b plus c, uh, a constant. So the exponential stays exactly the same, but you divide by the uh, differential of um, in front of the x here. And even more complicated, um, if you had numbers here, then you just make sure you adjust for those numbers. So let's have a go at these. This clearly... Um, I, by the way, here, there's no adding 1 to the power and dividing. Okay, It's not that. The exponential function is a different function. So here, it, the answer is going to be 3 over 2 e to the 2x plus c. What about here? Well, I firstly have written that as 2 fifths e to the negative x dx. All right, take the 2 fifths out and then realize that 1 over e to the x is e to the negative x. And I'd write that as 2 fifths. Uh, negative 2 fifths e to the negative x plus c. Here it would be equal to negative a third e to the 1 minus 3x plus c. Lastly what would you do here? I'd expand. That's e to the x, uh, so e to the x plus 1 squared is e to the x multiplied by e to the x plus 1. So that's e to the x e to the x plus uh, two lots of e to the x plus 1, and e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. So this is the integral of e to the 2x plus 2 e to the x plus 1 with respect to x. And I could do each of these separately. That's clearly a half e to the 2x plus 2 e to the x plus x plus c, and I'm done with exponentials. Okay, next we're dealing with uh, not logarithmic functions as such, but answers where you get a logarithm at the end. The key with these are two key things. One, they come up with a quotient. And by that, I mean a fraction. Okay, they tend to come up with those. And secondly, they come up when the numerator is the differential or near it, I'm going to put in brackets, of denominator. So that's what we're looking at here. When I see a quotient, I think it's either partial fractions usually or uh, a straight log. And I look to see, is the top the differential of the bottom? Okay, let's have a go at this. Is the top the differential of the bottom? Well, it nearly is. Okay, the differential of the bottom is 2. If I made it a 2 and then adjusted by multiplying by a half then it would be the exact differential at the bottom. So it's a half ln of 2x plus 1 plus c. Okay, and by the way, maybe I forgot to say here that if you have something where you have the top is the differential at the bottom, if you have it of that form, the answer is ln modulus f of x plus c. Okay, now is the top the differential of the bottom in this case here? No, the differential bottom would be 4. So let's, uh, firstly, let's take that 3 out. I like doing it in steps like this. Okay? Now let's make the top, the, uh, uh, the differential bottom. So make it a 4 and then adjust by dividing by 4. Okay? So it, now the top is the differential at the bottom. The answer is simply 3 quarters. Learn modulus 4x subtract 1 plus c. What about here? I take the 5 out to start with. Is the top the differential at the bottom? No, but it would be if it was negative 2. Right, so I'm going to put a negative 2 there and divide by negative 2 to adjust. So this is 
uh, negative divided by negative is a positive. So this is 5 over 2 ln of modulus 3 minus 2x plus c. Is the top the exact differential of the bottom in this case? The differential of the bottom uh, would be 2 sine uh, 2 cos 2x. So uh, as it currently stands, it's very close to, to the differential of the bottom, but the differential of the bottom would have a 2 there, so adjust by dividing by a 2. And so it's a half, learn, now it's exact, 3 plus 2 sine x plus c. Okay, and this one here, is the top the differential of the bottom? Well, very nearly it is. The differential of the bottom it would be 2x, so put a 2 there, divide by the 2 to adjust, and then you've got yourself a half ln of modulus x squared plus 4 plus c, and you're done. So there's logarithms done too. The next is um, where partial fractions are required. I'm not going to do these questions as they are too involved, and I've actually done them in my partial fractions video. However, I just want to point out, if you see a quotient, okay, so a fraction, you firstly think, uh, from the previous part, is the top the differential of the bottom? Exactly. Here, they're not obviously so, okay? So, you think of partial fractions as your next option. Now, I'm just going to tell you what these would be written as. Because this has two distinct factors and the, and the numerator has a lower order than the, the denominator, it would be the integral of the following form for A and B to work out. And each of these would give you a log. That would give you a log. That would give you a log. Okay? And you can combine logs as well uh, by using the log addition and subtraction laws. Okay, this one here... The top has power 2, the bottom has power 3, so it will be partial fractions, and it will be A over the first linear factor plus B over the second linear factor plus C over that second linear factor squared. This will give a log. These two will give a log, but this one here will actually just be a straight standard result because it's a polynomial to the power of uh, negative 2. See this, this one here, that's log, that's log, that's a log, and that's a log. And this last one here, it doesn't look like a partial fraction, but if you spotted a, a difference of two squares, it's 1 subtract x, 1 plus x, and then you know this is going to be the integral of a over the first one plus b over the second one. And again, that, when you integrate, it will give you a log, and that will give you a log. Okay, so I've done many of these examples in the partial fractions videos, so do check out there for full worked examples. Okay, now we're moving on to integration by inspection. Some key points for this one to work. Firstly, you need a product. You need two things multiplied together. Secondly, uh, you need one thing to be uh, like a uh, like a simple function, and you need a complex function, and by that I mean raised to a power. I want the function raised to a power. Thirdly, you need to see if the simple function is or looks like. differential of the function raised to a power. Okay, so this is complicated first. Let's go through in examples. Here's our simple function. Okay, we could call that the simple. And this is sine x squared. It's a function uh, raised to a power. So that's going to be our complicated part. Here's our simple function. Here, here's our complicated function here, raised to the power of 3. This is our simple function. Our complicated function is x squared plus x plus 5, but it's actually raised to the power of a half. Okay? Now, when you spot that, like, the differential of sine is cos, so this is an integration by inspection. The differential of x squared plus 5 is 2x, which is like x. So this is an integration by inspection. The differential of x squared plus x plus 5 
uh, without the half there is 2x plus 1. So an integration by inspection is going on here. Now when you spot that happening, so a simple function that is the differential of the other function raised to a power, okay, then what you do is you take the function that's raised to a power and you raise it to a higher power. So let y equal sine cubed x. And you differentiate and see what you would have got if you differentiated it. If you differentiate that, you bring down the 3, you multiply by the differential of sine, which is cos, and you reduce the power by 1. So, this is telling me that the integral, therefore going backwards, of 3 cos x sine squared x dx, which is the thing I'm looking to integrate, must be exactly sine cubed x plus c. So this answer is sine cubed x plus c. Okay, here again, the simple function is the exact differential, or very close to it, a multiple of it, of the thing raised to a power, of the function raised to a power. So let's take the function raised to a power and raise it to one higher power. Let's differentiate this. What would we get? Bring down the 4, multiply by the differential of the brackets, which is 2x, so we get 8x, x squared plus 5 to the power of 3. So going backwards, the integral of 8x, x squared plus 5 to the power of 3, must be equal to x squared plus 5 to the 4. But we don't have 8 of these, we only have 1 of these in our answer, so therefore the integral of the thing we're looking for, x, x squared plus 5 to the 3 dx, must be an eighth, x squared plus 5 to the 4 plus c. Right, what about this one here? Um, this is the exact differential of x squared plus x plus 5, which has been raised to the half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, x squared plus x plus 5, and we're going to differentiate it to the half. Uh, to the, we're going to add 1 to the power, sorry, so it's 3 over 2, and we're going to differentiate it. dy by dx, bring down the 3 over 2, multiply by 2x plus 1, and then we have x squared plus x plus 5 to the half. So therefore, the integral of this must be that. Uh, so the integral of 3 over 2, 2x plus 1, x squared plus x plus 5 to the half must be equal to, so x squared plus x plus 5 to the 3 over 2. Sorry about this working. And then we only have a 1 of these, not 3 over 2. So the answer must be 2 thirds x squared plus x plus 5 to the 3 over 2 plus c as our answer to our integral, which is there. So that's integration by inspection. Comes up when you have a product. Comes up when one of those items in the product is the exact differential of the other expression that's been raised to the power. And then you, what you do is you let y be the complicated one raised to a higher power, differentiate it, and then see what adjustment needs to be make, uh, made to, to go backwards and integrate. Okay, next we're doing integration by parts. This formula here is given in your formula booklet, um, but I like writing it as the integral of uv dashed is uv minus the integral of vu dashed. I find that easier to write. Key things when you know to use this. One, if you have a product, a product that is not in the inspection case. So if you've got two things multiplying together, which we have in all these cases here. Well, here, I'll talk about this one in a second. Okay, so you need a product. The second thing is, how do you use this? Well, you have to check the u that you choose, can you differentiate it? The v dash that you choose, yeah, can you integrate? They're the questions you've got to ask yourself. And by choosing them that way around, does it make it, does it make this, this integral the second integral easier because if it doesn't then there's no point doing it because we won't be able to integrate this okay so that's what you've got to ask yourself so let's go through here if I let that be my u and that be my v can, uh, v dash can I differentiate yes can I integrate yes will it make this easier yes it will because the, the u dash is one okay that's good if I let that be my u and let that be my v dash, can I differentiate? Yes, it will be 2x. 
Can I integrate that? Yes, I can. Will it make it easier? Well, this one will have some sort of 2x e to the x, which is a bit easier, but I might have to do that by parts again. What about this one? If I let that be my u and that be my v dash, will that work? Can I differentiate? Yes, I can. Can I integrate ln x? Well, I actually don't know the integral of ln x. I'm going to work it out in the last example, but I don't know it. It's not a standard result, so I can't have it this way around. Okay, so... Um, what if I did it the other way around? What if I said that be my u and that be my v dash? Can I uh, differentiate this? It's 1 over x. Can I integrate this? Yes, it would be a third x uh, cubed. Will it make this simpler, this bit? It would actually because it would just involve powers of x then, which I can do. So that's the way I choose it. This last one is just a trick you've got to learn. There doesn't seem to be a product here, but you could write this as 1 times the next. Now, if you let 1 be v dashed and you let your ln x be u, it turns out you can integrate this because you can work out u dashed and you can integrate 1. So that's just a trick to learn. Right, with these, I'm not going to do them, but what I will do is, sh is show you how to lay out your working to start off with. Always write down your u and your v dashed. Work out u dash is 1, work out v is therefore sine x. Write down the formula you're going to use. The integral of u v dash is u v minus the integral of v dash. Uh, sorry, got it the wrong way around there. The integral of u v dash is u v minus the integral of v u dash. Okay? And apply this uh, formula to this, make these into here and make work out the integral. Here again, your u would be equal to x squared, your u dash would therefore be 2x, your v is e to the x, and so your, your v dash is e to the x, so your v is also e to the x. Write down the formula, put them in the formula. This one, you will need to do two integration by parts. Because in the second integral, you will get an x e to the x, which you will need to separately integrate by parts. Here, so let your u equal ln x, so that your u dash is equal to 1 over x. Let your v equal x squared, your v dashed even, so your v is a third x cubed. I'm actually, having written this formula down, I'll do this one. u v is going to be a third, ln, a third x cubed, sorry, a third... a third x cubed ln x, and then it's going to be minus the integral of these two multiplied together, which would be a third integral of x squared, which is a third x cubed ln x, and then it's going to be minus a ninth x cubed plus c. This one here, let your u equal ln x, so your u dashed is 1 over x, let your v dashed equal 1, so your v is equal to x, and then apply the formula with this one here, and you will get yourself, in the end, something you can actually integrate. I think you get the answer x ln x uh, minus x, something like that. Okay, and the last integration we need is integration by substitution. These are generally very easy if you just follow the routines. The first things you need to do are you need to uh, change limits to get some marks. Okay, so... You know here you're integrating between uh, x is 0 and x is 2. So when x is equal to 0, u squared would be equal to uh, 5. So therefore u would be the square root of this, which will just take the positive 1, the square root of 5. And the other way around, when x is equal to 2, then u squared would be equal to 9. And therefore u would be equal to the square root of that, which will take us 3. So changing the limits usually gets us 1 or 2 marks. Now we need to change this dx here. Now, if u squared is equal to 2x plus 5, differentiating implicitly with respect to x, if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, I get 2u implicitly du dx is equal to 2, I should get. Okay? And then if I, uh, the way I can think of doing it, I can think of making dx the subject, as it were, dx would therefore be equal to u du, okay, dividing both sides by u and multiplying up by dx, so I've replaced the dx. Now I can actually write this integral. The integral of x 
the square root of 2x plus 5 with respect to x between 0 and 2 is now the integral between 0 is replaced by root 5, uh, 2 is replaced by 3, x, well actually I should have written x as the subject, one thing you should always do as well, I forgot that, you should always write x as the subject, so x is going to clearly be equal to u squared subtract 5 all over 2, so I'm going to write that as u squared subtract 5 over 2, root of this is going to be root of u squared which is u, and dx is u du, so u du. So what I've got here, I can take this half out, and I've got u squared here, so I'd have u to the 4 minus 5 u squared du. Now I can integrate this and substitute in 3, uh, and, and then substitute in root 5, take away the answers, and then multiply by half, and I've got my answer. And that are all, at last, the integral techniques we need for core 4. Thanks for watching.